doms and subs, masters, mistresses and slaves, owners and pets, daddies, mommies and littles, primals and prey, switches, heathens, kinksters and deviants, welcome to Legion After Dark. Hello and welcome to Legion After Dark. I'm your host, Lady M. Swan, and it is lovely to see you again. I've been uh, very busy lately, as I'm sure you've noticed. I attended the Cruel Huntress a couple of weeks ago, and it was their winter party, so they weren't doing a hunt hunt, but, um, but they had a massive play party, and it was so much fun. When I pulled up, the building, it was in this sort of industrial area of London, and the building was a, it looked like a warehouse that sold kitchens, you know, it was, it, it had the signage out front and everything, like kitchens and bathrooms, uh, but when you walked in, it was this two-story dungeon that was completely kitted out, and it looked like, I mean, seriously, I was dying. It looked like one of the um, sort of old goth clubs from the 90s. Um, the sounder like Sisters of Mercy was playing and everyone was in there. It was fantastic. It was unbelievable. I can't wait to go back. I told Ben when I got home, you know, if I would moved to London first before I met him, we would have never met because I would have just been in this club well, it's not really a club, it's a dungeon, but I would have just been there all the time. I would have never left. <laughs> but it was fantastic, and I look forward to going back in the spring where they do actual hunts. Now, for their hunts, they release the subs uh, who have to run and hide in the woods, and we get to go after them with paintball guns. So, very exciting. And uh, at the end when you, you know, you get the ones that you've, you know, shot and they all have to, you have to truss them up in the trophy room and they all have to pose so you can go and see all the, uh, all the different subs as trophies, which is fantastic. <laughs> but, um, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to be trying to get episodes out regularly. I know I say that every single time I record an episode, but, um, but now that things are starting to calm down a bit, it should be a bit more doable. Um, so, um, in other news, unfortunately, a segment of a show has to come to an end. And I'm talking about our song to scene two. I, we got a message from the head of the network. And he has received a lot of uh, notices and complaints about copyright issues. So we cannot play music, uh, copyrighted music anymore on our shows, which for me, uh, it kind of sucks because I really enjoyed that part of the show. But if you go to the Legion After Dark Facebook group, I do have a playlist that I've put together um, and I put it together on YouTube instead of, instead of Spotify for the, for a very specific reason. I want to explain myself because obviously fuck YouTube, but I, uh, I had to put it on YouTube because uh, some of the songs I wanted to put on there were remixes that I cannot find anywhere on Spotify, which is very depressing. I looked and searched, <laughs> but I could not find these remixes anywhere. So, um, so I've made it on YouTube. Um, if you go to the Legion After Dark group, there should be a pinned post with the playlist and it's constantly being updated and songs being added to it. And, um, yeah. So, oh, also if you have a song you'd like added to the playlist, you can email me at legionafterdark at gmail.com and I will add it with no hesitation whatsoever on my part. <laughs> I guess it depends on the song. If it's just awful, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, 
I can't put bad music on there, but there is some questionable stuff on there anyway, so, you know, we'll just have to use our best judgment on this one. <laughs> um, so, to get down into the episode, we have 2014's My Mistress. Here's the trailer. I'll do whatever you say. Whatever you command me to do, that's what I want. Whatever you want. Yes. Thank you. So what do we do now? Everything. So, that was the trailer. Um, 2014, My Mistress, it's an Australian flick. It's starring Harrison Gilbertson and Emmanuel Biert. 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 I don't know how to pronounce her last name, so I'm probably murdering it right now. But, um, it's... Uh, right. I'll give you the basic rundown of the plot, and then I'll tell you why... The only good thing about this movie is her outfits. Her outfits are fabulous, and I love every single one of them. But anyway, I digress. Um, so we start out with this boy. He's 16. Cannot remember the character's name to save my life at the minute. I believe it was Charlie. I think it was Charlie. I'm pretty sure it was Charlie, but that tells you, that should tell you how uh, memorable the people in this movie are. Um, and we, trigger warning, we open with him finding his father uh, hanging from the rafters in his garage. His father has committed suicide, and he found him. Uh, he calls for help. He tries to get him down. He can't, and he goes back inside where his mother's having a party, and she sees him, and then, obviously, we cut to the funeral. So, straight away... They're setting up the whole trope of kinky people or people who gravitate towards dominance or are involved in BDSM as being damaged people, broken by trauma, that can only find healing through kink, which is so insulting and seen in just about all of these movies that I review, so it's, it's very annoying. Um... So, he sees at his funeral his mother make out with his dad's best friend. So, he's fucking done with her. He's just like, fuck her, fuck him, you know, my dad is dead because of this bullshit. And that's not strictly true, but, you know, we don't know. So, he goes to have a cigarette at this playground. He goes to this playground, uh when he needs to think, apparently. And he meets this, he sees this mysterious woman who's just moved into town, of course. And, uh, yeah, talks to her and everything. So this genius of a person decides, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fucking stalk her a bit. I'm just gonna sneak over and have a look at her house. And he does. He sneaks over goes into her garden, like, through the shady gate that she has. She has a very shady gate. And just goes into this woman's house. 
just walks in to this woman's house, goes up the stairs and finds her in her playroom with a client. She obviously chases him out of the house because what the fuck? Um, he runs away and watches her and he watches her all the time. He just follows her around like a stalkery little puppy and sees that she puts an ad up for a gardener. So he rips the ad down and goes and applies. And after some convincing, eventually he lands the gardener gig, cleans the pool, sorts out the lawn, that kind of shit. So obviously I'm not going to get super detailed with this because it is so, uh, it is so predictable. Uh, obviously he eventually gets close enough to her to demand. And that's the thing. He doesn't, he, it shows him chatting to her a bit and asking her questions and things like that. But then he just throws a little tantrum and handcuffs himself to, in her playroom, she has a carousel horse and he handcuffs himself to that and puts the key in his mouth and is like, she's like, get down from there. And she, he's like, make me. And ma she has to horse whip him to get him to spit the fucking key out. This shit would not fly in any capacity with a dominant of any gender. I don't care what gender it is. Your ass would be fucking gone, banned, blacklisted. Like, you, what the fuck? I don't know what this, obviously it's a movie. It's not meant to be representative of real life, but this got on my last nerve. I'm telling you, this kid pissed me off. <laughs> so, uh, so after that, he uh, ends up being the gardener and being around her and everything like that. And she gives him different tasks to do and all this shit. Now, the subplot of this movie is that the dominatrix, uh, she has a child who has been taken into care because uh, her ex and her were on drugs and they weren't watching him and he got hit while he was on his bike. And so they took him off her and she's gone through the court system and, um, everything. She has visitation with him and she has her social worker that sort of speaks on her behalf and monitors her behavior and shit like that. And of course he's taking advantage of her. And again, fuck this guy. Fuck all the, I mean, all the men in this movie, fuck them. Um, but yeah, so she's being taken advantage of by this guy. And honestly, I'd rather would have watched that movie. I'd rather would have watched the movie of her having to navigate the legal system while being a dominatrix and get regain custody of her child than some teenage boy projecting his bullshit onto this woman that he doesn't even fucking know. You know, I, it, I would rather have watched that, but instead I watched this. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's being taken advantage of by that guy and she's got this kid who is in care and she goes to watch him when she can. That's meant to be, oh, well, she's broken too, you see, because you can't be kinky without being damaged, can you? No, of course you can't, movies, right? I'm telling you, this shit is... Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to do another uh, do another episode with a movie that's less tropey. But <laughs> anyway, um, all of this escalates, obviously. Now, it escalates in a couple of different ways, and it escalates in, this, in some confusing ways, because obviously they get closer, and in one way on his side of things, how it escalates is his mother. His mother, he refuses to speak to her completely. He has nothing to do with her anymore. And she's like, what's with this weird behavior? Why are you, where are you going every day? Why are you, you know, why do you have this little mantra that you do to yourself uh, every night before you go to sleep? Like she doesn't fucking get it. So she follows him and rings the bell when he's not there and tells the mistress, you know, this kid's 16. He is a kid, you know, fuck off. 
or I will come after you. And obviously, she's in the middle of a court battle trying to get her kid back. So she's not fucking dealing with this bullshit at all. She's like, she's upset because obviously she has feelings for this kid for reasons unknown. I have yet to see anything so far in the movie that justifies her having any sort of affection towards him. But there you go, the magic of Hollywood. <laughs> um, and uh, he freaks out. He throws a tantrum like a little bitch. And throws all of her furniture, all of her outside stuff into the pool. And I mean, just sits out there screaming at her window and being obnoxious. So she eventually lets him in and she's like, right, we're going to have a cup of tea. Now, everything she, everything that they have done up to this point starts with a tea ritual. Um, it's not an ext- it's not a, a overly complicated tea ritual, but they have the tea, they pour the tea, you know, that is, that is how th- a scene starts with her, it seems. And she tells him, you know, you can, we're going to have sex. You can tell me all the shit you want to tell me. And after we have sex, that's it. You're going to fuck off and you're not going to come back here. So they have sex. It doesn't show it, um, which I'm fine with. I don't, you know, especially given that the guy, the guy's meant to be 16. Age of consent in Australia is 16, but not everywhere else. So it's best that they don't go there. Um, and then guy shows up, social worker guy, because what's happened in the middle of his tantruming and his mom's drama is that the social worker guy has given so many good reports that she's, uh, they, they've just said, right, well, we're going to transfer custody back to you. And I'm serious. The scene is that fast. She's in an office and they're like, I don't see any reason why we can't go ahead and tr- retransfer custody of your son back to you. And that's it. Like we get, n- <laughs> like, it, it seems like they, it seems like they, there was a lot of other storylines here that were cut out in the editing process, I think, because a lot of that is just so rushed through that it, it, it confuses me. And I was, this suspicion was further uh, cemented into my mind after the social worker shows up um, and the kid is there and she's there not her kid, the 16 year old, the uh, other character. And she says, right. So we're finished. She's got her kid. She's got custody transferred back. We're finished. And he says, what about our plan? Right. And she says our plan and laughs and then says finished. And that's it. So that makes me think that there was a whole other subplot that they developed in the movie that was just cut out at some point and I wish they'd left it in or at least cut all mention of it out because it what what plan are they even talking about did they have a plan I have no fucking idea what's going on with this so I think he had a, a bigger part and I think they edited a bunch of stuff out and because they edited so much stuff out it it, it just makes no sense now Um, we are treated to a wide variety of kinks in this movie. Oh, by the way, that is how it ends. She's like, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And they fight. They start rolling around fighting and she gets up on her stairwell with about a nine foot single tail whip and cracks it a few times and says, both of you get the fuck out. And they both get the fuck out. It's very anticlimactic. The, the teenage boy he's, he gets upset and he gets really, really drunk and he sneaks into her house again. Honestly, I cannot fucking believe how long this movie is. And not one time did she think I should lock my door. This kid keeps breaking into my fucking house. I should probably lock it, but she never does. (laughs) Anyway, so he sneaks back into her house and falls asleep in her kid's bed, in her kid's bedroom that she has built and made and made all nice for when she gets custody back. This piece of shit goes and falls asleep in her kid's bed. And the thing is, when she sees him in the morning, she's totally normal about it. I mean, I understand that she's 
meant to feel something for him and she's meant to understand that he's having an emotional reaction to being cut off. But no, what the fuck? Kick him out of your house violently. You know, I, I just don't get it. Um, and that's what he, he's like, oh, if I, if I try to call you, don't answer, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, I'd beg you to call me. And it's like, why? This, <laughs> this guy has done nothing for you. He's done nothing for you that justifies this affection that you're showing, <laughs> but whatever, you know, you do you. Um, and that's it. That's, he leaves and that's, that's it. Like we end on him running in a uniform with a bunch of other dudes who are also running in that same uniform. And he sees her playing with her kid at the playground at the park and he smiles and jogs on. And that's what I think this movie should do. This movie should jog on. I mean, like I said, her outfits throughout the whole movie, even her vanilla outfits, I love. So whoever did the costuming on this movie, beautifully done. Love it. Everything else about it was mediocre, tropey. Um, the fetishes I quite liked. I liked the puppy play. There was a puppy play scene with one of her clients, which I quite liked the puppy play, but in that scene, she had a teenage boy, Charlie or whatever the fuck his name is, in a coffin watching, and he's giggling away to himself, and sorry, as a professionally, not cool. That's a breach of confidentiality. You can't do that. So, you know, you can't have somebody, unless the sub is aware that someone will be watching, but you know what? I'm talking out of my ass because we don't know that. She could have set it up with the uh, puppy earlier and gotten him to okay this teenage little shit being in a coffin <laughs> laughing at him. Um, it'd make for a good humiliation scene, actually. So maybe, maybe she ran it by him, but it didn't show me that. It didn't show me a lot. It didn't show me what this mysterious plan with the social worker was. It didn't show me any reason for her to be putting up with the amount of bullshit that she's putting up with in this teenage boy. It showed, it showed me nothing. Like, uh, it, all the things I wanted to know, the movie didn't show me. So it was like, it was like I felt like the story had potential when it was originally written, but it was chopped up and edited and fucked over in such a way that we're left with a very shallow, tropey teenage boy's fantasy of what a, domina a dominatrix should be, of how they will act. Make no mistake, if you break into a a mistress's house she's not gonna hire you as a gardener it's not gonna happen i'm how sorry for you but it's not gonna happen um it, it was ridiculous Ugh, i'm i'm sorry to keep saying um but it it's one of those movies that when i try to think back on something some sort of relevant plot point there's just nothing. There's nothing there to... It's basically the same story that we've seen a million times in these movies. Broken person A finds broken person B, stalks them until broken person B gives in and allows them to come into their life for no justifiable reason, and then it just all ends. There's some sort of drama, and it all ends. And that's pretty much this movie. It It's not really worth it. I don't... I mean, I recommend it for her clothes. If anything, if you're into fashion, yeah, she looks great. She's gorgeous. But overall, it's just mediocre. It's just really, really mediocre. Out of 10 paddles, I would give it five. Just straight down the middle. It's not the worst I've seen. Like the actual... You could tell there was some sort of a decent budget behind it. The set's pretty decent. Uh, the cinematography is pretty decent, but yeah, it's overall, it's just, it was just really meh, to be honest, <laughs> to our kink of the week. And this week's kink of the week, peccatophilia. 
yeah, I said it. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud of myself for saying the word uh, properly, like a big girl. <laughs> Pachycephalia involves sexual arousal or gratification for from performing an act that is considered to be sinful. So, it's not ne- it's not necessarily uh, sacrilegious in that, like you, do- it doesn't have to be a uh, priest play or nun play or anything like that but it's the the fact that the act that you're performing is sinful that makes it so exciting and arousing so that could be anything from sodomy it can be anything from uh sodomy to reenacting the seven deadly sins to shoplifting to adultery anything that's considered sinful is what gets the motor running which I know a lot of the kinks I've done on kink of the week so far have been fairly normal uh but this one I really have a special place in my heart for because I just love the idea of becoming aroused because you know you're doing something sinful and just the concept of sin I mean Let's say you have this fetish, but you weren't raised particularly religious, right? So what do you consider sinful? Is it the same sort of general stuff that we get from the top three Abrahamic religions? Or is it your own sort of moral code defining what is sinful for you and what will get you off? You know, so it's very interesting to me to hear about anyone's experiences with it. So if you know anyone with this particular kink, or if you've played with this particular kink, uh, do email me. I'd love to hear about it. I'm very curious. I mean, I have a bit, it's, I have a bit of it, but it's not sin based for me. It's more, um, sacrilege is more my cup of tea. Because it's not about the sin itself. To me, it's about defiling the church, if that makes any sense. Whereas this is completely about the sin and the concept of sin and it being arousing to you. So very, very nice kink of the week this week. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, Obviously, you can email me at (laughs) legionafterdark at gmail.com. God, honestly, you guys, I swear I have had coffee and everything. So I don't know why my mouth isn't cooperating. I think it's been too long. It's been too long since I've recorded an episode. And so it's, uh, I'm shaking the rust off, I guess shaking out the cobwebs, (laughs) getting back into the rhythm of recording. Um, But yes, uh, kink of the week. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, we're going to try to get some more kink of the weeks that are a bit more like this, a bit less your usual everyday kinks and more interesting philias that we can explore together. So... Uh, I will be bringing out another episode next week. I'm going to start and hold me to this. All of you listeners in the Facebook group, I know you're listening. I see you. I can see your names in my head as I'm saying this. Don't be afraid to tell me to stop fucking around and record. (laughs) Because honestly, I do just get busy. I just get so fucking busy that it gets put on the back burner And I want to try to get it out every week. So be my support group. And if you'd like to join my support group, Legion After Dark on Facebook. Uh, If you have a message, obviously, legionafterdark at gmail.com. And I will see you next week for another fun, kinky review. Oh, man. See, this is when I would go into the song to scene to. Now it feels like. I don't know. It feels like my episode's really short now because I don't have the music at the end. And man, 
That sucks. <laughs> Maybe next episode I'll figure out a way. Maybe I can have like a recommended song to scene to where the, uh, the audio is not in the episode, but I recommend a song and I can put the link in the description for you guys. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. Um, well, thank you for joining me for this episode. I, uh, I look forward to getting back to regularly recording and don't let me slack. Hold me account guys. Cause I oh God, I've got to, I've got to schedule myself or something. Time management. Someone bring me a time management slave. Well, I will see you next time for Legion After Dark. Bye.